In today's video, we're going to be replacing this old low wooden raised bed with this brand new eight in one tall birdies bed. So before we actually get into the process of replacing this bed with that bed, let's talk about the reasons why I'm doing this. The first kind of major reason is that this is very short, maybe six, eight inches max, and we want this to be an edible herb bed. So at this height, cats, dogs, you name it, can get in this bed, do their business. So that kind of ruins the edible aspect. The other reason is we wanted more space. This bed's a little bit wider. It's a lot deeper. So it's not gonna be mined by trees around here and it's gonna give us more growing space for these herbs. The other reason why we wanted it to be tall and prominent is because where I'm sitting is about, I don't know, 10, 15 feet to the door that goes right into the kitchen. So the idea is that you open your back door, you walk into your yard. I want this bed to be full of herbs that I'm going to be using on a daily basis. So things like oregano, dill, basil, thyme, rosemary, some trailing edible flowers like nasturtiums. I want it to look nice, but I also want it to be full of the things that I want to use on a daily basis. So those are kind of the main reasons. So now we could actually get into removing some of these plants, cleaning this area up, and actually get into the process of installing this bed here. The plan is to fill this bed Hugo culture style, and I'm going to actually be using a variety of branches, logs, leaves, compost that's not finished yet, potting mix, old straw, all sorts of stuff that I have laying around. And so since I'm using a lot of that organic material that isn't fully broken down, it's going to be compressing and sinking in and settling a lot. So I don't want to fill this bed up today and then immediately plant right into it. So that's going to be on Tuesday because on Monday, AKA tomorrow, we're gonna be getting apparently an inch to an inch and a half of rain. So that's another reason to wait. The rain's gonna compact the bed and help settle it very nicely. So actually I need to dig out both of these rosemaries and move them into pots. So we'll do that right now. Now we got all the plants out of the way, I'm going to sweep up around it, and then we're gonna just go ahead and lift this whole wooden bed right out and drop that guy in. And we'll talk about how to fill a bed Hugo culture style. So now the bed is placed, and what you see in front of me here is a giant pile of logs. <laughs> and what you also see are some coffee bags. I already started putting some in there, but I wanted to show you what my thought process was here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this coffee bag and I'm going to set it up so that it's sort of centered. All right, so now you could tell it's probably looking very floppy. So that's why I have these logs. The logs are not just great for Hugo culture, but they're gonna be great for helping me set up this bottom because the logs are gonna be used to secure this burlap where I want it. And it's also going to serve as a foundation for my Hugo culture bed. If you guys don't know what Hugo culture is, it is a old German sort of technique of using detritus, things like logs, branches, twigs, things that you generate just in terms of um, sort of maintenance around your land and your property. And so what they did is they said, okay, well, we have all this woody material. We don't want to plant right into it because we can't, but it is a very rich source of carbon. It does a good job of retaining moisture. It brings lots of beneficial bugs, things like that. So that what they did is they make these big rows where they stacked all these old logs, leaves, all sorts of organic matter, and then they just piled it in soil. And by doing that, what they do is they create this wonderful sort of spongy bottom because as these logs break down, they'll become more spongy and they'll be fantastic at actually retaining moisture. The other thing that happens is they will break down and form a very, very rich, nutritious soil for your garden bed. So that's kind of the most very basic principle of fugal culture. It's this idea of using all this organic waste, organic matter waste that you have around you to build better soil. These logs are a mixture of mulberry and jacaranda that are both from trees on my property that I've been trimming back this past spring. So what I'm gonna do now is fill this entire layer with logs and then we'll talk about what I'm gonna do next. Now we're gonna go ahead and start filling the soil, just like I said. I'm going to be using a big shovel in combination with a little scoop. 
When you're filling a raised bed, this is your best chance to get rid of all this old, like used potting mix from old grow bags that you don't want to amend. Or maybe you bought some soil that didn't perform well. Just throw it in the bottom of a bed. This bottom has plenty of time to sort of mature and become enriched. And what you really want to do is focus the good stuff in that top 12 inches. So now we're going to water to sort of help settle all this soil that we've now added. So what you're going to see me do now is dump in some mulch, some old potting bags that I really hated using, but I just had laying around and some old compost, bits and bobs, all sorts of things that I have kind of laying around my yard. This is the best opportunity to get rid of it. These are chipped branches and really leafy branches from a tree that's over my yard right there. This was chipped about a week ago and it's been cooking in a pile ever since. It actually got up to 140 degrees entirely off the wood chip and leaf matter alone. So this has partially cooked. Again, this isn't gonna be a nice boon of nutrients, but it is deep enough that it doesn't matter. What this will do is create a nice sort of habitat for beneficial bacteria. Worms will dig through this, and also it'll create a sort of sponge that's going to do a really good job of retaining water. One thing I like to mention is that as you fill a raised bed, no matter how you do it, whether it's just soil or you are doing a hugo culture, Make sure you're watering maybe every fourth or a third of fill level because this is going to help settle. It's also going to make sure that bottom half of your bed is properly watered because once you fill it up to here, it's going to be really hard to sort of do that first watering unless you're doing it in layers. So I'm going to do that now, help settle this in, and then we're going to keep filling. Now we're going in with the unfinished compost. You can see that <laughs> some of it is quite finished. You can see sometimes people put banana peel wrappers in there. So let's go ahead and pull those out. But it's pretty gross. It's something that I haven't really been turning. So this is honestly more of a cold compost than anything. And you can see that I haven't been very efficient at it because a lot of the straw is not broken down. But again, that's fine. The straw is gonna break down in the bed. We've got a pretty uh, tasty looking bed here. I'm about halfway full. This is the point where I'm going to stop adding unfinished material, or at least material that's entirely unfinished. So no more tree branches, no more wood chips, no more leaves, no more unfinished compost. What I'm going to do now is drop a bag, uh, like it's a three cubic foot bag of soil conditioner, which is generally a, it is like a broken down wood chip, but it generally has more manures. It has a lot of beneficial bacteria. And that's going to help sort of eat up this layer. And then we're going to start filling with soil. So you can see that now it's starting to get really serious. I'm adding tons and tons of soil. I'm looking around my yard for any random bags that I've been ignoring for a long time. I just found this old bag of sunshine mix, which is just a peat based formula. I bought this maybe a year ago and I just haven't wanted to use it at all. So might as well use it. I have it. I'm going to go ahead and bury it in right now. I gotta say this is looking really nice. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. But I wanted to give you guys the final update for today, and that is that we are stopping filling right here. So take a look at that. It's after that first ridge folds back in. That's pretty much where we've left it. And again, we're leaving this here because it's going to rain a bunch tonight and tomorrow. And I don't want to fill it all the way. I want to let the rain settle it. And then however much is left, it's going to be my amendments. So that's where I'm going to add fertilizer. I'm going to add compost. And I'm going to add the last little layer of potting or raised bed mix. So we're going to leave it here and I'll see you guys in two days. As is often the case for San Diego, the rain was kind of a lie. We did end up getting rain, but it was really like 0.6, maybe half an inch of rain. But needless to say, we got a little bit of settling. So I'll show you that right now. This is where we are with the settling. Basically, it went from like here down to there. So, you know, maybe one inch, not as much as I thought. I guess I did a pretty good job of actually settling it in with the hose. So now that we're at this point, I feel pretty confident that we're not gonna have much more settling. And so now what I'm going to do is do the amendments and that top layer, and we'll get some plants in there. I don't have everything I wanna put in there, but I do have a good chunk of it. So let's get into finishing this up. Before we finish filling this raised bed, there is one last step. I think I've said that a few times now, but this time it's for real. Uh, last step is amending the bed. And what I have here is about three cups of the Espoma Biotone Starter. 
this is a good all-around starter fertilizer mix. I think the numbers are like 433, so it's pretty well balanced, but also has a lot of the beneficial bacteria that you want to put into your garden that'll help your plants grow. So what I have is about three cups. That's roughly how much they recommend for this kind of square footage. And since I'm already about, I don't know, four to six inches deep, all I'm going to do is surface scatter it and then bury it with soil. There's no need to mix it in at this point. I don't want it any deeper. At this point, the roots will have some immediate access to it. And as I keep watering it, those nutrients will percolate down. So you don't want it too deep, but you don't want it too high up. So now I just need to spread this out in an even layer. All right, that's in. And again, I just broadcast it like this. I don't want to mix it because if I mix it, I'll probably actually ruin the distribution. The next thing I want to add is some azomite or volcanic rock dust. It doesn't have to, uh, first of all, nothing that I'm adding right now is actually like mandatory required. I just like to put in everything that I can to make sure that the plants have everything that they need. And that's why I use something like this rock dust. It has this kind of reddish, um, kind of brown color. And what this is, is it's made out of a bunch of different volcanic minerals. And those minerals have a lot of these like little trace nutrients and elements, like random things like boron that you don't really think about or test for. And honestly, most of the time you probably don't even need it. But in this case, um, when I'm doing these raised beds, and I'm going to be putting in a lot of these perennial herbs. I don't want to have to come in here and correct anything. So I want to make sure that I'm adding every possible nutrient that they could need. But again, not required. And just as a caveat, you can overdo it. So like I said, I put three cups of the fertilizer because that's roughly what they recommend for this size. For the azomite, I just kind of sprinkled in a little surface layer. Now that we have this set, that's pretty much all I want to add. Now we just need to add the soil and the compost. And actually that's what I have right here. This wheelbarrow, I already blended together a couple uh, different potting mixes with some fresh compost. At the end, what I'll probably do is I'll top it with some of my homemade compost and then we're done. So now I'm gonna just scoop this into here and we'll get moving. The bed is officially full and that means there's only one thing left to do and that is to plant it. In this bed, like I mentioned before, it's going to be annual and perennial herbs. The idea behind this bed is that it's things that we're gonna be using on a more daily, weekly basis. So things that are we, gonna, we wanna put in drinks, things we wanna put in a dish every night, stuff like parsley, which if I put in the garden, I guarantee you I'll forget about it and I just won't use. So all that is gonna come front and center right here and it's going to be a nice mix of colors, textures, smells, flavors. And it's gonna just be very inspirational because I wanna do a lot more outdoor cooking this summer and having it all placed right here is gonna make it really easy to do that. The moment of truth is here. The herb bed is built, filled, and planted. So let's take a couple minutes to talk about all the different herbs in here and how I plan to use them. The first one is barbecue rosemary. It's our favorite rosemary. We opted to put it in the ground since it's so large already, but that was in the old bed, so I wanted to mention it. As we pop up into the bed, I have a lemongrass. This was propagated from Kevin's house. So I'm looking forward to seeing this grow. It does clump and bunch, but I find it very easy to manage. So I'm not worried about that. And then I have some chamomile, a wonderful tea herb, and some calendula, which is also a wonderful tea herb. This right here is one of my favorite smells in the garden, hands down by far. And that is tulsi or holy basil. It has such a sweet fragrant aroma. Even just from touching it here, I could smell it up to my nose. So that's fantastic. I use this all the time to put into teas. It gives it a very nice floral uh, flavor. And it's also really good in drinks, cocktails, anything like that. Coming down, we have a couple basils. This is Thai sweet basil. So I'd grab a sprig of that and throw it at the end of like a noodle stir fry to give it some flavors reminiscent of Thai cuisine, which I can't match, but I will try to get close. <laughs> and then I have a dark opal purple basil. So you could see that the basil leaves on this one are very dark purple. The idea for this is that it's more of like a standard type of basil, has the same kind of flavor profile, but it looks really interesting. So if I had like a fresh grilled pizza and I was trying to finish it up, I'll reach back here, grab a couple leaves, throw it on top. It'll add a lot of color contrast. And as it starts to wilt on the warm pizza, it'll give it a lot of aroma. So that's the idea with that one. In the middle here is a garden sage. You can't go wrong with sage. It's so savory and irreplaceable by any other herb. As you know, it's a classic in fall. It's a classic with potatoes. Pan fry it up and just eat it as a garnish. It's wonderful. So having sage front center, always recommend. And now one herb that I don't use very often and I'm not crazy about is parsley. But by putting it in this bed, it's going to force me to reach for it more often. If I had it in the garden sort of hidden away, 
I tend to forget about it. So the idea is that by having it here, I could grab parsley whenever I need. It's a great thing to just add into almost any dish. It adds a sort of background flavor that you don't know is missing until it's missing. Um, so that's why this is here. I want it to be accessible and easy for me to think about. Dill is a, another wonderful classic herb. I think a lot of people underutilize dill. It's really nice in like cucumber salads. It's great mixed with yogurt. It's great on like grilled zucchinis. There's so many wonderful uses for this herb and having it front center here means that it's pretty much gonna have no foliage by the time it flowers because I can almost guarantee you we're going to pick this clean. That's why I'm gonna have more of them around but I wanted at least one handy in this bed. Up front is my favorite time of all time which is lemon time. So that was a lot of time in one second but this is another one of these where I like to just touch it whenever I'm walking around the garden and just breathe in that aroma. It has this wonderful sweet lemon scent with like that savory back tone of the thyme. So the way I use this is I tend to throw it on actually anything, but it's wonderful in soups, bean soups, potato leek soup, anything like that where you want that lemony flavor without the acidity while still getting a ton of savory thyme flavor. I can't say enough about that one. Definitely try it if you haven't. This bear patch here is actually cilantro. What I've done is I've sown leisure cilantro from San Diego Seed. That is a slow bolt variety. And I've only sown it in this front half because the idea is that as that emerges, I want to then succession sow. So as that's growing, I'll plant some new ones. And then if that starts bolting or if I harvest it out, I'll have some new cilantro on the way. That's why I didn't want to sow it all at once. And that's something I highly recommend. Up front here is another classic, it's chives. Chives you could just chop up, throw on top of anything. Great on eggs, great as a good little finishing garnish on pretty much any dish. And these sad guys over here are green onions. You can see in the video, I, I split them up from a certain, uh, like one block. And when you do that, they tend to look really sad at the start, but I could almost certainly guarantee you that they will bounce back. So I'm not worried about that. Up front, I have French tarragon. I propagated this back in June 6th from a clump I have growing out there. French tarragon is one of these unique herbs you don't see very often. It has a very light licorice anise kind of flavor, but it's really wonderful with eggs. It, Sounds kind of weird, as I just said, it has a licorice flavor, but trust me, it's wonderful, especially scrambled eggs. It's also really nice in a potato salad. I am still trying to figure out more uses for it, but it's also classically used in fish dishes that are kind of more light and fragrant. Now, up in the back here is a new thyme variety, and that is pizza thyme. <laughs> and uh, it, true to its name, it actually does smell a lot like pizza. It's sort of a cross between oregano and thyme and that's exactly what it smells like. I haven't actually used this yet in the kitchen but I'm definitely planning on reaching for this when I make some pizza in the future. Front and center up here is a garden classic and that is pineapple sage. I feel like a lot of people recommend growing it but most people don't know how to use it. I personally don't use it for cooking but I do use it all the time for drinks, cocktails, fresh herb waters. If you have like a little fizzy lemon water throw some of those leaves in there and you'll add this wonderful pineapple-y scent to it. If you just touch the foliage and breathe it in, immediately what you think of is pineapple. So it's really quite a unique herb. And the last but not least is the Bulgarian honey garlic. This actually grows from bulbs. I ordered it back in November. I haven't cooked with it myself yet, but the idea is that it produces these flowers and you could pick these flowers off and throw them on like a little flatbread at the end. And it supposedly has this sweet garlicky kind of flavor. So that's what that is. I'll let you guys know how that is once it's ready, but that's what we're going for here is an inspirational cooking herb bed. As we get into summer, we'll be hanging out out here a lot more. I'll be setting up the grill over here, grilling up pizzas, grilling up fresh vegetables, making recipes straight out of the garden. And I guarantee you, I'm gonna be turning around and reaching for herbs out of this herb bed. So if you wanna see how I actually cook out of the garden and use these herbs in an inspirational way, then stay tuned because summer is going to be the season for cooking out here. Thanks for watching guys, and until then, I'll see you next time.